It's no secret that Resident Evil games like to give you a lot of collectibles to look for throughout your time playing, and Village is no exception. You got the 10 houses, you got the 20 goats, and you've got 47 files that you need to collect. On this channel I've already shown you where to find the outhouses, I've shown you where to find the goats, and now I'm going to show you where to find all of the files that you need to collect throughout your time playing. This can be stacked up in multiple playthroughs so don't you worry, but I'm going to show you in chronological order from the start of the story to the end of the story, where every file location is. So there will be story spoilers throughout my time, but I'll try and keep it as spoiler free as possible, but other than that, this video will be showing you how to get the bookworm achievement, so let's get straight into it with file number one. Okay, so as soon as you take control of your character for the first time, you'll hear Mia reading Rose a story, and the actual first file location is in the kitchen of your house. So what you're going to want to do is while you're carrying baby Rose, you're going to want to head up the stairs towards the dining table, and then you're going to want to take a right, and you'll see Mia cooking over there. On top of the fridge, there is a white note stuck on there with a blue magnet. Read that, and that is file number one. Straight from the fridge, you're going to want to go and carry Baby Rose up the stairs. And once you go up the stairs, you'll trigger a small little cutscene where you're tapping Rose on the tummy. After that, you're going to want to get all the way to the top of the stairs and then take a left. Go all the way to the end of this corridor, you'll see a room with a light stuck on the left hand side of the door. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go inside of this room and then in the far right hand corner you'll see a small chest of drawers and a light on top of that. And there is a newspaper, that newspaper is file number 2. File number 3 and 4 are right next to each other still in this small little prologue scene. So if you go back to the stairs from file number 2 and enter the bedroom you can have the option to put Rose down but instead Go to the very right hand side and you'll see an office slash study and the laptop on the desk is our third file and then right next to that is a chest of drawers. If you go over to the chest of drawers and open that up, inside of the drawer is another file and that is file number four. So four files straight out of the bat in this prologue scene, let's move on. So, unfortunately, a little while later shit goes down and you're involved in a small car crash. You'll see a phone ringing and there's a cutscene where you answer the phone and you're talking, you know, you're, you're talking to your insurance provider and shit like that. But once you regain control of Ethan, you want to look back to where you picked up that phone, there's a dead body, and on the floor next to that dead body is file number five. Make sure you examine that, and there you go, file number five in the bag. So you've now survived the lichen attack and you've spoke to the old woman for the first time. You enter the village, but before you go into the village, you'll see a house directly to your left with a green door on it. Open that green door and go to the far right hand corner of the room. You'll see a candle lit corner desk with a file on it. That is file number six. File number seven, you're going to want to go straight out of that greenhouse again and go into the center of the village. You'll see a small shrine that's lit up with candles. You're going to want to go to that shrine and inside of here there's a goat of warding. But if you examine the sign on front of the shrine, that is file number seven. Nice and easy to see, nice and easy to miss also. A little while on you meet a couple of NPCs, Elena is one of them and you'll be knocking on Louisa's house. Once you go through a little bit of dialogue, you go inside of Louisa's house and inside of this entrance hallway there's a brown chair. On top of that brown chair is our next file, that's file number 8, make sure you give that a read, it's a nice little note to Louisa. File number 9 is located a little bit further on in the story, you meet the Duke for the first time and you'll be heading into Castle Dimitrescu. Once you enter the castle you'll see a portrait of the three daughters of the castle and when you're staring directly at that portrait look left you'll see a candlelit table with an open book on it. The open book itself make sure you examine that because that is file number 9. File number 10 is located in this grand opening hallway with the stairs that lead up to the chandelier room. But if you go into the side room, the safe room I call it, the one where Duke sits inside, and you'll see a labyrinth puzzle, but to the left of that labyrinth puzzle is a small table, and on top of that table is an open book. Read that, and there you go, that's file number 10. Once you gain access to the chandelier room, you're going to want to walk up that red carpet, and you'll see the massive chandelier hanging. What you're going to want to do is go up the stairs to the left hand side, and once you go all the way to the top of the stairs, you'll see the wine room straight ahead of you. 
enter the wine room and then you'll see a central circular table. Make sure you look on that circular table, there's another open book. Read that because that is a diary entry and file number 11. So now you've put the maroon eye into the door, it's opened up and triggered a cutscene where one of the daughters comes to bum you and loads of bugs fly out your hand. It's just a casual day in the office for old Ethan though, isn't it? But when you go into this sort of white and gold room, you'll pull some planks of wood off of the opening in the wall and then you fall down a hole into the underground. Once you fall down that hole, straight ahead of you is a small table and underneath the dried up fruit is a note from one of the workers of Castle Dimitrescu and you'll see that that is file number 12. Files number 13 and 14 are located right next to each other and just after you do the fire puzzle in the underground you're going to enter this sort of dungeony place. Nice and horrible really. Keep following the dungeon all the way around until your walkway is blocked off. To the left of the blocked off area you'll see a trolley. On top of that trolley is file number 13. Once you've got file number 13, you're going to want to enter one of the iron gates to the left hand side to go around the blockage. Once you go around the blockage, straight ahead of you is an open iron gate. You're going to want to go into this cell because on top of the table is file number 14. File number 15 is located just after you kill the first daughter and this is a scripted event, you really can't miss it. So you've come out from the underground, the daughter's now died. You can pick up a crystal torso and move through. Once you move through into this meat room, you're going to want to look to the left. There's a bookshelf and on top of that bookshelf is another file. That's file number 15. Once you've read that file, obviously make sure you pick up the wine that's in the center of the room because that's a story item and you're going to need that. File number 16 is located just after you see Lady Dimitres talking on the phone to Mother Miranda. Once you go inside of her quarters, you'll see on the chair there is a bloody notebook. That bloody notebook is file number 16. After you glue your hand back on, that's all I need to say. You guys will know it if you've been to this part of the story already. But you'll head into the opera room of the castle Dimitrescu. You're gonna need Dimitrescu's key for this. But once you've opened the door, you're gonna wanna go inside and then you're gonna wanna head up the stairs. Once you head to the top of the stairs, you'll see a small cabinet with a clock on it. To the left hand side of that cabinet on top, there is file number 17, a note from the Grand Chambermaid. Once you've picked up file number 17, directly to the left of that small cabinet, you'll see a wooden door. Go through that wooden door and you'll see all the way at the end of this corridor, a lamp and a small weird looking sort of bookcase thing. And on top of that, you'll see file number 18. You actually need to examine this. So once you inspect it, you need to spin it around until you see a button that says examine. Once you've done that, that will trigger your file. And I need to iterate how important it is for you to examine it after you've inspected it because if you're just inspecting it and then you put it down again, it will not trigger that you have completed that file and therefore if you get all the way to the end, your trophy slash achievement will not pop, so bear that in mind. Still in the opera room, but if you make your way down to the bottom floor, you'll see the grand piano sitting in the middle of the room. If you look at the grand piano and then look right, you'll see two green chairs and a small circular table. On top of that circular table is file number 19, but again, you need to examine this one further in order for it to trigger. So make sure you inspect it first and then inspect it further, and that will trigger file number 19. So after the portrait room, you come up a tall ladder, and then if you look behind you, there is a goat of warding, but you'll head into this attic. You'll go past a black statue, and then all the way in the corner, you will see file number 20. Inspect that. And there you go, but it's all the way in the corner, you'll see a table with a lone candle on it. That is where file number 20 is sitting. And then you just take the door to the left to go out onto the roof of Castle Dimitresk. File number 21 takes place after you get out of the castle. You'll see a house with a boat outside of it. What you're going to want to do is go in the white front door and then to the very right hand side, you'll see a save station. To the right of that save station, another note and that is file number 21. Nice and simple to see and if you come here to save, you really can't miss it. After you see Duke the next time inside of the altar area, you'll go back to the village for the second time. Once you're in the square, you'll notice that there is a new entrance way. What you're going to want to do is go through here and you'll see a blue banister. There is a pot 
sort of hanging on a bit of wood you're going to want to go up the stairs and into this house with the red door to the very left hand side you'll see a green table and on top of that green table is file number 22. A little bit further on in the village you'll come across an iron insignia gate that leads to the house with the red chimney. Before you go into that gate though take a right and you'll see a blue gate that is locked. Once you unlock that gate you'll see that there's a note on it that says locked due to missing homeowner but if you go inside of this gate and then take a left you'll go up some steps towards a house. This house you can unlock later on, you'll notice it's got a small guitar on it, but to the very left of that doorway, you'll see that Benevito's gardener has left a note, and that is file number 23. So now you can go back to the iron insignia gate, and what you're going to want to do is go into the house with the red chimney. You'll follow this path for the story anyway, so you really can't miss it. Basically, you climb the yellow ladder onto the roof, and then follow it down into the house itself. Once you go into the house, you'll see a table, and there is a lichen in here, so beware of that. But on top of that yellow table is a book, and that book is file number 24. Just to the right of that book is the key that you need, so you really can't miss this one either. File number 25 is located in the very central part of the village once again. If you go back to that shrine location where one of our earlier files were located, go past that and go up towards the church. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go inside of the church gates, and then enter the church itself. If you've been in here before, you'll notice some things have changed and there's actually a laptop here now. What you're going to want to do is examine the laptop and that is file number 25. Fast forward quite a bit and you've defeated Donna Benevito. On your way out, you'll enter a sort of garden with a bunch of archways and if you take the archway that gets you back on track of the pathway that you were following, you'll see an iron gate to your left hand side. If you go into that iron gate and go up the steps, go inside that house and in the very back room you'll see a bedroom, there's a save station in here but to the very left hand side in the corner there is a notebook and that notebook is file number 26. So on your way into the Moreau section of the game you get attacked by this big fuck off dog. You can either choose to skip the cutscene or just wait the cutscene out because basically during the cutscene you escape the dog's grip and you sprint into the small house to the right hand side. Inside of the small house after the cutscene you'll regain control of your character and you'll see a dead body just sitting behind you. And that on top of the dead body is where file number 27 is. And that is pretty darn good. We're getting there boys, we're really getting there. So you'll snatch a jar off of Moro and then you're looking to escape. You'll come out of the cave and you'll see a windmill to the left hand side and you're basically going to be running towards a boat. But before you go to the boat, you're going to want to take a right and enter a small shack. Inside of the shack is our next file location. So if you go in here on top of that table with the stripy sort of rug, there is file number 28, nice and easy. Further on in the Moreau section, you enter the gatehouse. And if you're looking at the power button, you're basically going to want to turn around and go out of the back door. So you're not going to want to go into the area where Duke is sitting, but you're going to want to go out the back door and head up towards the windmill. But before you go into the windmill, you'll see a truck, and on the seat of the truck is file number 29. Just read that, and there you go, that's file number 29 done and dusted. So now you've restored power to the Suez Gate and you've drained the water, you'll see a giant fish thing, which actually, if you've played this section already, you'll know who that is. Basically, what you're going to want to do is follow the fish thing around, and that's what you're going to need to take out. But before you do that, you'll enter a small house that is just sitting there, and basically what you're going to want to do is look to the very right-hand side of this house just before you jump down, there is a cabinet. If you open the drawer of the cabinet, you'll see file number 30 sitting inside of that drawer. Just give that a read, and there you go, 30 out of 47. So now you've defeated the fish thing, you're going to want to head up into the mine area, but make sure you break every box that you can, because fuck me, it's fun and addicting. So you go into the mine area, but before you go out, you're going to need to take a left and pick up the key. So once you take a left, you'll see a small TV, and at the base of that TV is a small stool with a yellow journal on it. Read that journal, and that is file number 31. Right at the end of the Moro section, before you go back to the village, you'll have another way that you can now go, because you've got the crank that you need to open the door. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come out of the base of the windmill. If you want to save, you can, 
but basically you'll remember this area because there are a couple of pigs here. But before you go out the gate that you came in through, you're going to want to go to the crank on the right hand side of this area. Put the crank in here and open the gate. And once you've done that, you're going to want to run all the way up the path and you'll notice that when you get to the top of this path, you'll notice a bunch of dead bodies and then take a right, go through towards the back of these houses and to the very right hand side, the very right hand side house, there is sort of a door that's locked and you're gonna wanna go to the back of that house and there's a small bricked area that is open. You crouch down and enter that. There's a lichen in here that you'll need to take out, but once you've done that, there's a table with a chest on it, but to the left-hand side of that table is file number 32 just sitting there. File number 33 is right out of the way. You're gonna to wanna to go back to the altar area and you're gonna to wanna to go towards the concrete bridge right at the start of this game. So basically you'll notice that there's a drawbridge that is lifted right the way up. Now you've got that crank, you'll be able to lower that drawbridge. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is put the crank in there and lower the drawbridge. And once you've done that, on the other side of that drawbridge, you'll notice that there is a small boat. You can get inside of that boat because you do have the key for that as well. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go the way the boat is facing and do a UE. And then you, once you've done the UE, you're gonna to to follow the pathway that leads downstream you're going to want to go all the way down and then to the right hand side you'll see a dock location once you've docked the boat you're going to want to go to the right hand side once again follow the path to the right and go all the way up you'll see a cave and once you've entered this cave you'll have to crawl through and this cave if you go right once again you'll see a laptop that is on just sitting in this cave if you inspect that laptop, that is our next file location, that's file number 33. A proper out of the way one and an annoying one to get, but you can get it after the morrow section. So now you're back at the village and you're following the signs towards Heisenberg's area. You'll need to open a gate, but once you've done that, you'll see a sign that says good luck. Don't follow the tunnel, though, go left instead through the tall grass. And what this will do, this will take you to another area that you may never see if you just follow the main story path. It's a massive barn, and inside this barn is a bit of a boss fight that you need to take out. So you'll see a locked gate, just shoot that lock off or melee it. You'll see a few pigs that you can kill if you wanted to, and then you can take their goods. But you want to go inside of this big barn area, and then once inside you'll see a big fuck off boss that you need to kill. Once you've took that boss out, you'll notice that there is a red door with a bunch of locks on it. Shoot all of those locks off and you'll enter a back room with a bunch of meat in it that you can grab. And all the way at the other end, there is a table with a couple of chairs at it. And on that table is file number 34. Now you've taken out a bunch of lichens in sort of the lichens lair and you'll go through this crawl space where you get to see a cool little scene of a bunch of lichens feasting on some dead bodies. Once you crawl through there though, you'll see at the base of these barrels where a bunch of ammo spawns, there is file number 35, just a scrap piece of paper on the floor, nice and easy to get to. So now what you've done is you've picked up the last bit of your baby in a jar and you'll come to a boat and this boat section you need to come across so you really can't miss this if you're just following the story. What you're going to want to do is take the boat until you get to your next docking location and then before you go up the ladder, there's actually a down area that you can go to instead. So rather than going up the ladder, go down the steps and then all the way at the end of this sort of dungeony area, you'll see a desk with a light on it. That desk has file number 36 on it and it's a cool little thing to read. It tells you about all the bosses that you found so far. Inside of Heisenberg's factory, you'll come across sort of a dark hallway with a bunch of men that are hanging to the left hand side. You need to come to this location in quite a few different scenarios, and in fact you need to come to this location as part of the story anyway. So what you're going to want to do is come down into this power room, you're going to need a cog for it, and then go down to the stairs in the right hand side. And then you'll find some stairs that lead up. Go up them stairs and shoot those two red buttons on that door to open it up. Once you've done that, go into the room and look to the left hand side, you'll see a blue cabinet, and on top of that blue cabinet, you'll see file number 37. 
File number 38 is located after the grinder section of Heisenberg's factory. You'll be running up the top of the grinder after you've turned it off. What you're going to want to do is run all the way to the left hand side and go through these two metal doors. Go up the stairs to the left hand side and then before you go up the stairs further you'll see a map to the upper levels and just to the right of that map there is a small sort of cabinet and on top of that cabinet is file number 38. Don't forget to pick that up, read through it, because it's a cool little story of the Soldats. Once you've grabbed Heisenberg's key, you can open up the door at the very top of the elevator. Use Heisenberg's key, and once you've done that, you'll enter the door, and straight ahead of you will be another door. If you go through that other door, you'll hear Heisenberg starts talking to you, and then as soon as you go into the right hand side on top of a brown what looks like a speaker but isn't a speaker, is file number 39. Straight after file number 39, Heisenberg will tell you that he's gonna kill you, and then you'll have to fight a boss that gives you the complex mechanical heart. After you've killed that boss, basically pick up the heart and walk through into the control room. Rather than going out the door to the right hand side, go all the way to the other end of that room and turn left, you'll see a small table with a light on it, and on top of that table is file number 40. Just give that a read and there you go. After you meet Chris at the very end of the factory section, you'll see this big tank, but before you go in that tank, make sure you look at the laptop to the very right hand side of the save station, because that laptop is file number 41, so make sure you give that a look before you move on because otherwise you will just miss this one, there's no going back from here. The last six are located after you find the Megamyce in the epilogue. What you're going to want to do is with Chris you're going to see a open door and once you go through that door you'll enter Miranda's lab. Inside of this lab there are files 42 to 47. As soon as you enter this room you'll see four books that you're going to need to inspect and then look at it and inspect it further to bring up the file note. This gives you good information on each of the four lords that you have now taken out and defeated, so make sure you give them a read if you're interested in the lore. And then once you've read all four of these books and examined them all further, so it brings up the actual file, you'll need to find two more in this room. So once you've done that, you're going to want to go round to the left hand side, and you'll see that there is a table with some pictures of people, and in the middle of those pictures is another file, and then once you've done that, have a look around to see if there's any more things. But basically it's all just lore at this point. You're going to want to go to the arse end of the big central slab and you'll see an open book. And that open book is file number 47, our final file. That will bring up the bookworm achievement slash trophy. And there you go, that is every single file in Resident Evil Village. Boys, hopefully this video helped you. If it did, a like's always appreciated and subscribe for future content like this and on other games. But basically this final room here is amazing for lore. I recommend reading them all fully. It's a really good room to look around in and it's right at the end of the game. So hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. If you do want to check out other Resident Evil videos that I've done on this channel, the playlist will be linked in the description and it'll be on my channel if you do want to check it out. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Hopefully this helped you.